Here we go! Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Although it's personally near the bottom of the list of my favorite Mario Kart games, being only the third game in the series and on the Game Boy Advance, yeah, Mario Kart Super Circuit is about as good as it could be. And I recently learned that Super Circuit is actually the best-selling non-Pokemon game on the Game Boy Advance, and fourth overall. So if you had a Game Boy Advance growing up, chances are you've played this game too. And before we jump in, my channel sponsor Control has now added a strawberry cream shake as well as protein cookies to their arsenal of delicious meal replacement options. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and trying some, check them out in person at GNC stores across the US or online via my link in the description. Anyways, with all that said, we got quite a bit to go through, especially for Game Boy Advance standards, so toss a shell at that like button below, let's hop into our 32-bit carts and find some Super Circuit Lost Bits. Alright, so before we get to the final release version of the game, there are several screenshots and bits of footage that reveal quite a few alterations that were made to the game before release. Now, the earliest scene build of the game was made around July of 2000, about a year before the game was first released in Japan, and apparently, it was said that the game was around 30% complete around this point. Right away, as seen in this short clip from Nintendo Space World 2000, we can already observe quite a few changes. The fonts for the heads-up display graphics are different, there's no coin counter yet, so it's unclear if they were even implemented at all at this point. The character placement graphics normally seen on the left of the screen were either missing around this point, or all eight racers were seen instead of just the top four, as is seen in the final. The way the sand and grass is seen on the sides of the road is different, this appears to take place in a scrapped circuit track as no track is seen in the final cut of this game with the layout seen in this minimap. And finally, probably the biggest change of them all is that the character graphics look quite different here. It looks like the original plan for the character design was for them to all have some big heads, and honestly, I don't hate it. There's actually another screenshot from around this same time where we can get a closer look at these early graphics of Mario and Wario here. And furthermore, this is another course that appears to have been cut, or at least reworked before release as, yet again, no track has the same layout as the minimap seen here, but it does bear some resemblance to the broken pier track in the final cut. And lastly, for this earliest build, in this screenshot we can see a much earlier design for the character select screen. For those that have played Mario Kart 64, it's no surprise that the character mugshots used in the character select screen in Super Circuit are styled after 64. But this early character select screen takes it one step further, as even the layout is the same. But yeah, the graphics here, although the same pose, appear less polished, and there's also no character preview graphic either. Now next up, a short segment of the game was shown off in a German TV show that I don't even want to try and pronounce, and this appears to have been a build a bit further along compared to the previous ones. Here we can see a quick preview of Bowser's Castle, as well as Shy Guy Beach. There are three timers on screen, presumably one for each lap, something which isn't seen in the final build. And oddly enough, the two lower ones have the same time for some reason, and the game is seen running pretty smoothly here too. Then, once again from Germany, from another TV show, yet another clip from around the same time shows more gameplay, and yeah, we get a nice look here at Mario's early graphic driving towards the camera, and honestly, this one makes me feel... quite uncomfortable. Mexico. Now the next build of the game comes from around August and September of 2000, and this was primarily seen in footage from an internal VHS tape, as well as a few other websites, and here a whole bunch more differences can be seen compared to the final release. We once again get to see the early character select screen, only now it's been updated a bit, with the player number now visible on the selection reticle, and the fonts appear different as well. We also get to see a glimpse of an early title screen of the game, which outside of using the same sky graphics, is quite different. Instead of just seeing all of the game's characters, here we only see Mario as well as a wide-angle shot of some palm trees, a pyramid, and Peach's castle, I guess giving the player a glimpse into a few of the game's locales. The game's logo graphic is quite a bit different than how it's seen in the Japanese Final Cut, and opted to use the advanced styling of the GBA, and Mario would also drive up to the camera here instead of the camera just panning down as it does in the final. 
And if the similarities to Mario Kart 64 weren't enough already, we can also hear that at this point in developing Super Circuit, the game would also just straight up use the title screen music and other sound effects from Mario Kart 64, but using a Game Boy Advance sound font. <laughs> Furthermore, we can now see an early course select screen which, big surprise, is also very similar to Mario Kart 64. And then finally, getting to the gameplay, we can see that gone are the big head style early graphics and they're now replaced with ones as they went on to appear on release. Although there are still quite a few differences compared to the final including some items like triple mushrooms, stars, and boos not being fully implemented yet, and the award ceremony looking quite different, overall the game was getting much more polished. And as a quick little aside here, I just thought it was fascinating hearing the presenter say this part during the presentation. I guess another thing you should keep in mind is we're using special development hardware to display it on a television screen. The pixels on a television are going to be a lot larger, so it may look a little pixelated on there, but trust me, on the real screen itself, it's going to be very finely detailed. It's amazing the difference you'll see. I guess I've just gotten so used to being able to connect and record devices nowadays that it really made me do a double take hearing that they had to use a special device to be able to display a game on screen. And mind you, this was way before the Game Boy Advance player attachment was made. So here they had to use a Wide Boy 64, a special attachment that let devs play Game Boy and I guess Game Boy Advance games via a Nintendo 64. Honestly, some really cool stuff, and this makes me feel both really old and Zoomer at the same time. Anyways, after this, there were a few more distinct pre-release builds from February of 2001 leading up to the game's release. And some more major differences could be noted, including the Boo graphic here looking different, the title screen was updated but still used Mario Kart Advance as the title all the way up to only like a few weeks from release, and more. And there were some more minor changes, like some different lighting and player select being changed to choose a character, which in the interest of time we won't be going over here, but as always if you want to read up on all of these smaller differences, check out the cutting room floor page links down with my sources in the description. And on that note, let's now change gears and talk about things from the final release of the game. To start things off here, there are graphics left over in the game that reveal several items that were seemingly once planned to be implemented into the game, but for one reason or another were cut, and most of these are Mario Kart item staples. First up we have the Golden Mushroom, and in addition to just this graphic, functionality for this item is still left over too, and as it worked in Mario Kart 64, here too it grants the player unlimited boosts for a short while. Calling it difficult to control in this game would be quite the understatement, but if you can harness it, this item basically breaks the game, and that might have played a role in the decision to have it scrapped. Then next we have the triple banana item, and unlike the previous golden mushroom, there doesn't seem to be any functionality left over for it as using it during a race doesn't seem to do anything. On the other hand though, the next scrapped item, the fake item box, which actually hasn't been seen in Mario Kart games for a while now, does again have some functionality, but instead of dropping out a fake item box, just a banana plops out. I guess the decision to not include this item might have been made before the fake item boxes were even developed and a banana might have been used as a placeholder since their effects are pretty similar. And last up for the unused item graphics is this bob -omb. Now, unfortunately, there's no functionality left over for a bob item, but it has also been theorized that this graphic may have been intended to be used instead of the portrait getting crossed out when a player takes control of a bob in the game's battle mode after losing all of their balloons. In any case though, yeah, this graphic doesn't end up normally seen in the final release of Super Circuit. And the unused graphics don't stop there, as next, there are a few early versions of some graphics left over in the game too. These include early versions of the jump panel graphics, the zipper boost panels not flashing with brighter red coloring, as well as graphics for all of the ranks that you can get awarded for completing a given cup. In addition to using different coloring, mainly with the B and C ranks here, originally the game used single, double, and triple S's for the top ranks instead of using stars as is seen in the final cut and pretty much every Mario Kart game since. 
Then moving on, there are a few unused graphics associated with several of the game's courses. First of all, Mario Circuit. In the final version of Mario Circuit, only trees are seen as physical obstacles. But amongst the graphics for the trees are also graphics for a pipe, as well as a giant mushroom that I guess were also once intended to appear in the course, likely as obstacles, similar to how the pipes were seen in Super Mario Kart's Mario Circuits. Then next, Sky Garden has graphics of these fuzzy characters from Yoshi's Island, Cheeseland has this unused graphic of a satellite dish which looks similar to the one that's seen in Luigi Circuit, and then Ribbon Road has graphics for a spinning star, as well as a toy UFO? I think that would have been pretty cool to see. And then there are also some unused graphics associated with the Super Mario Kart track remakes, some of which we also saw unused in the Super Nintendo game as well. For starters, just like in Super Mario Kart, Super Circuit also has unused graphics for oil slick hazards for Donut Plains, Ghost Valley, Bowser Castle, Choco Island, Koopa Beach, Vanilla Lake, and even Mario Circuit, which was used in Super Mario Kart but didn't end up getting used here in Super Circuit. And similarly, for all of these tracks, there are also unused graphics of an early version of the game's coins on the tracks. Then another graphic that makes another appearance here from Super Mario Kart is this block meant for Mario Circuit. Only in this game, it uses an incorrect color palette and as such appears like a sand block or something instead. Then there's this unused block meant for Choco Island, which was also unused in the original Super Nintendo counterpart. There are graphics for an unused animation of the ice blocks breaking apart instead of them just disappearing like they ended up going with. And similarly, there are also graphics for an unused animation of the blocks in Ghost Valley falling away instead of, once again, just disappearing. For Donut Plains 2 and 3, we have this graphic of a hole from which Monty Moles would have popped out from as they did in the original Super Nintendo track. Be it technical limitations or something else, this graphic suggests that they were also once planned to be implemented here before being ultimately scrapped. And then finally, we have this unused graphic of what looks to be a coin meant for Rainbow Road, and although using different coloring, this also appears to be the same coin graphic we saw back in my video on Super Mario Kart. Oh yeah, there's also graphics for a font that mostly goes unused in this game that's found amongst the graphics for the heads-up display, suggesting that that's where it was once planned to be used as well. Now I say mostly unused, since it appears that the L and apostrophes here, which stand out for using brighter yellow coloring, actually do appear to have been used for displaying the lap times at the end of completing a race on one of the remade Super Nintendo Extra Cup tracks. And now, last up for this video, there are actually a few leftover remnants of tracks that go normally unused in the game. First off, not only are there normally unseen minimap graphics for not one, not two, but all four battle courses that were seen in Super Mario Kart, but these courses are still functional and can even be loaded into as well. First up, we got SNES Battle Course 1, which oddly enough spawns all the players way out of bounds. At first, I didn't think I'd be able to get into the regular bounds of the track, but eventually I was somehow able to clip on through the barrier. Then we of course also have SNES Battle Courses 2, 3, as well as 4. These all appear essentially the same as they do in Super Mario Kart, and seeing as how all of the racetracks were reworked for this game, there's certainly a non-zero chance that the plan was to slap in all of these too. In fact, seeing as how these are still left over in the game, I'd say it's pretty likely. Now to be fair, the first battle course in Super Circuit is almost the same as SNES Battle Course 1, and then three of these SNES courses are basically just simple variations of each other, so I can see why these might not have been fully included. Regardless, it was still fun to mess around in these courses, even though I only tried racing here by myself. But it was odd to see that in the courses where the other racers loaded inside the course's bounds, they all seemed to follow a programmed route around the course. Well, most of the time. Sometimes they would just... yeah. Also, one weird quirk I noticed about SNES Battle Course 4 here is that the background graphic would like cycle through and it just looks incredibly scuffed until ultimately it settles on a nice cloudy sky. Anyways, cool to see that these are still kicking around in the game's files, but I don't think players were missing out on all too much with these being cut. And now finally, there's actually one more track that, although is seen in the game, isn't ever normally playable. 
And this is the track that's used during the award ceremony segment after completing a cup. Loading in here, we can see that it incorrectly defaults to using the minimap from Peach Circuit, and then the track itself is just a basic oval shape. And surprisingly, although the CPU players were able to drive around some of the unused battle courses, here they, uh, seem to be having some trouble. Other than that, not all too much else to say about this small course, but still pretty cool to be able to race around in it. Anyways, that'll wrap up another Mario Kart Lost Bits video, and I hope you enjoy. If you did, be sure to check out some of my other videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.